this competition crawler right here cost me well over a thousand dollars and it required the help of many people to get it spec correctly and built properly this on the other hand you can buy for 299 dollars and admittedly when i first put them head to head this did quite a few more lines than this one but in this video i'm going to tell you about the five upgrades to get this thing ready and it's going to shock you what it's able to do for not a whole lot of money Red Cat Ascent available soon from A-Main for $299 if you like this video, make sure you pre-order it because once it's available October 27th, I think it's going to sell out. So this is $299 and it is the best performing crawler out there. I think it beats the Axial Basecamp and the Traxxas TRX4, the current kings of the competition. And those are quite a bit more expensive than this one. But when I put this on the same lines as, as this one, as my G-Speed comp crawler, you know, it, it couldn't quite handle it. But I thought, man, it's, it's got some potential because it's, it's just box stock, not set up correctly. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the five key upgrades for this vehicle. And I, I just did it. And it doesn't take too much money. It doesn't take too much time. And I'm going to put them in the order of importance. So now we're going to show you the test baseline. We're going to compare the Red Cat Ascent to a comp crawler, the $1,000 G-Speed LCG Belly Dragger, and there's the G-Speed in red. You can see it go through the Wall of Doom with no problem. So they're going to use the same exact tires and wheels, unweighted, boom racing with high racks, and the Red Cat Ascent is able to do this very tough climb. So that tells you the promise of this vehicle. And here is our hardest side hill. It is steep and it is slippery this time of year. G-Speed has no problem. Look at that power. Just flips a UE. And going this way, it slips, it slips. And you'll see a lot of three-wheeling but it has so much poison balance no problem the red cat really has no chance even with the same wheels and tires it's just too narrow and too high and right there it's not oh made it made one it just kind of swooped it out and here's another test look at that big crack the G-Speed is able to do it without too much of a problem. Nice and stable. Now the Red Cat Ascent. Not doing quite as well. It's a little high, a little bit narrow, and a little bit top heavy. Even on the same wheels and tires. Lots of attempts, and I believe it's able to make one. And finally, this is a tough one, a big crack, and then side hit, a lot of repositioning, falling into place, and the G-Speed is able to do it. Look at that, all that steering. And it slides into place, but because it's got some nice forward weight, it's able to do it. Red Cat, on the other hand, after... 10 minutes of trying, you can't even can't even get in, so definitely could not do this one. Alright, $299. They have another one for $289, a red one with a little more a wider body. But look at that. Uh, and it's very similar to my thousand dollar comp crawler. I mean, I had a custom swivel mount made, some custom, uh, everything's custom, you know, for the body. And this one, it just, it just comes like this. It used to have a, a, a bed, but 
you can get rid of that. And now it's like super ready, right? So check this out. So this is a belly dragger comp crawler. And this one particular one is a G speed. And it really is the cream of the crop. What performs best on the local terrain. And here it is. So initially I had a video here. Uh, check that out. I, have, I list the pros and cons of this fabulous vehicle and I kind of saw the potential that this thing has. So I'm going to go through the five upgrades and then I'm going to take it out on the course and you'll be shocked how good this thing is. So look at that. The bottom was not changed. I think it had a heart of gold and the layout is just like my G-Speed. I go, hmm, can't really lose with this thing. So I went to upgrading it. So the first upgrade is the ESC. So the ESC is kind of jerky, hard to modulate, hard to control it when uh, from drag brake to freewheeling, it just, just goes out of control. So obviously the easy upgrade is the hobby wing. Oh, check this out. My, my custom mount doesn't even have this. So you, all you do have to do is push it forward and then boom, it pops out. How easy is that, huh? Super light. So look at that. So it's hobby wing. 1080 right there. So that's a key upgrade. And that will allow you to modulate, allow you to, you know, um, have a lot of adjustability with it. Okay. The next upgrade I would say is tires. So tires, I already saw the potential I on my first video. So these are pretty good tires, some of the best ready to run tires available. You know, but uh, they don't have the micro fine knobs. And but it, it's pretty light. The the, the, the rims are very light. The, the foam is, is not supported at all. It, it just collapses, very little side hilly support. And one, one issue is I would love, love to use, re reuse these tires, but they're glued to the wheel. It would have been nice to have some cheap beadlocks, not because you want to use the beadlocks, but so you can take the tire off. Uh, as it is, you can take this tire off by boiling or putting some acetone, but it's not easy. So tires and wheels is the second upgrade and there's a key upgrade here uh, that you have to hang out to the video. Once you have a beadlock, there's something you could do that will just make it blow up. The next upgrade is the motor. So the motor is nice and big and heavy. Uh, 42 turn motor, 550, but I don't think it has to be this big, our, our motor. And also this thing is so slow. Uh, it was, it has the same, it's the same motor as on my uh, COE hauler, car carrier. <laughs> So it's a lot of torque, but it's very slow. Even at 3S, it was like, and why you need a, a little faster motor is some, some, some movements, you, you need a little bit of, a, of momentum. You generate some punch and momentum. Uh, and this really, I couldn't do it even with 3S. Next upgrade is the servo. So the servo, I don't think you really need to upgrade, but on my test, uh, I did a event in uh, the Sierra Nevada mountains. I was, it, was, it was locking up the, the the steering quite a bit. On my local trail here at Linda Vista, no problem. But I did upgrade it to a, a powerful high-tech servo. And the last and final upgrade that cost a little bit of money, not, not really, is just springs, just lowering the vehicle. So uh, I got some low C mini T springs right here and I moved the shock over uh, to lean it over. And now um, it, it, sits, it sits pretty well. It looks like my the normal stance of a crawler. And this is important in side healing and uh, other, other sensitive maneuvers. And now how about some free upgrades? I took the cab, you know, you unbolted the, the other half. I don't really need that. I wanted to change my weight distribution, make it lighter. And they already body mounts right here. I took the battery tray off. I took the, the body mounts out. So make that whole rear lighter and it's still, it, it's non-structural, so it's still stiff. And they already give you a spot here for a battery. I use these small 3S batteries. And finally, could be free, but I spent uh, just a little bit of money. It is some brass. Notice there's no brass in the underneath, and this is how I tested it. Brass when on portals, covers, and what axle, they're all expensive, you know, it adds up. So, um, but one way to get cheap brass is just the lock ring of your of your beadlock, you know, put some brass there or just put some weights, some some fishing weights, some lead shot, whatever you have that's heavy in the wheel and that's a cheap mod. So now the 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 CG is good now. 
because the uh, the wheels definitely help it. I only put it on the front. And the weight distribution used to be 59.41. And once I did my upgrades, now it is 63.37. Using the stock radio, no need to upgrade this. This is pretty cool. Uh, look at my servo, it's good now. And then my pinion is very, the, the stock pinion I think is very big right now for, I'm just using a, I don't know, $10, it's under $20 motor from Hobbywing, a brushed motor. So no need to go brushless, really. So here we go. My pinion is ki kind of big, uh, but this, this, this ESC is quiet and very adjustable. So I'm gonna adjust this ESC. This is box stock settings on this ESC. Uh, and I'm gonna reduce my pinion and see if I can, if I can keep this motor or not. It's, a, it's kind of a, a low turn motor, all right? So check out the running video. And then when you come back to me, I'm gonna tell you about what makes this vehicle so good, all right? All right, after all the upgrades, let's see what we got to work with here. So definitely sitting lower, same loose and tires, and has, there's no doubt it's gonna make it. It's just so easy for it. And here's the side hill. And right there, it's able to do it. It's quite stable too, it's not lifting its fourth wheel. Making a three point turn there. And then coming at us. And right there, right there. A critical point. Is it gonna lift the wheel? Not even. It is dead stable on the side hill. And here's the cracks that it could not do earlier. Not a problem. really impressive now it's still not super wide but because it's slow now it's become a lot more stable right there that right rear it just gets up and over amazing oh this is a fascinating yeah, everything happens slow so a little obstacle here yeah but it's more, it is just um, a a big technique. rock So some vehicles are able to just get up and over right here if they have really good bellies, nice clearance. This one is not able to. So the fact that I can get here is amazing and it's pretty stable. What, what the Red Cat's gonna do is it's gonna try to go to the right, right there. And once on the right, there's actually, you can, you can claw your way up. So it wasn't able to do it, but I positioned the vehicle right there. I go, what if we can get to the right? Yeah, I can definitely do it. So I tried for like five, 10 minutes to get it to the right. But right there, it was always hanging up with the left rear tire and then it would fall. So something is not quite dialed. Maybe the, maybe you need better high clearance links. And here is that side hill entry that it couldn't do earlier with the mods now it's a lot more stable better servo as well as there's a lot of right there it's able to settle in and in this move let's see what it does it, it, the G speed had a lot of repositioning to do in this one actually does not <laughs> maybe because it's narrower it just makes the turn uh, so it ha has a lot easier time believe it or not a little belly dragging there but super flat belly okay and the final part of the test is uh, in the Sierra Nevada mountains a lot of granite, a lot of cool obstacles here. Scale Challenge West is what the event is, is called and everyone was asking about this vehicle. They saw how it performed and 
didn't want to do no what we thought of it and here it is half cab modification and it really performed well very stable very fun all you had to do was just mob over the stuff to some lines and approach angle was so good departure angle was good a couple parts needed some some speed some wheel speed wasn't able to do but most things like this no problem look at that it's so good this uh red cat ascent so 299 i mean we didn't expect much but it really is a true you know might be car of the year if at this at this rate oh look drone of the year right there super good so great vehicle with but it's a great baseline so with the right mods it's a winner color me impressed what has red cat done here and let me tell you this is gonna sell out the minute uh, it's it, it goes on sale so what you need to do is you need to right now hit that pre-order on, on the a main link because I don't think there's any other way uh, you're gonna get it uh, especially if you wait till it, it's available it'll just quickly say out of stock so pay attention to that one all right thanks a ton guys